But the other day I realized that I hadn't checked my power bill for a while. I pulled up my account on the Southern California Edison website and I was pleasantly surprised to find out why. They owe me money, so they haven't bothered to email me about anything in the interim. This reminded me that, oh yeah, I have a solar array and a Tesla Powerwall, which was installed last year, and apparently they are still working. It also reminded me that I promised you guys a one-year follow-up video on that project, so here it is. Excellent! Cooler Master's MK730 Gaming Mechanical Keyboard is the more portable version of their flagship Master Key 750 and features the same premium brushed aluminum finished and floating key design as well as genuine Cherry MX switches in blue, brown, or red. Use the function keys for on-the-fly RGB LED control, admire the stylish bottom and side light bars, and feel the comfort of the removable wrist rest in a 10 keyless form factor that you can easily take on the go. It's got USB Type-C too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. So for those of you who missed it, I already made a six video series on my experience with Tesla and their solar and power wall products and installation. So I will link that playlist in the video's description if you want more details. Long story short though, there hasn't really been any change since my six month review, everything still works. So if you're just here for the one year numbers, you can jump ahead to that point in the video. For those who need a refresher though, I will recap what happened from the beginning of the process when I first plunked down my $500 deposit on September 4th, 2017. Installation planning, prepping, coordination with utility and permitting took a while. It wasn't until about seven months later on April 2nd, 2018 that work actually got started, beginning with the replacement of my original and very old main electrical panel, which has now been upgraded to a 200 amp main panel, as well as some other hardware changes and upgrades that brought my home up to code. I think my favorite part of this Part was when they used a man-sized drill bit to drop a six-foot copper grounding rod beneath my concrete foundation. They actually did that on both sides of my house. One week later, on April 11th, the solar was scheduled to be installed, but after the team arrived, they inspected the roof and decided that it was too old. They actually won't install new solar on top of an old roof that might need to be replaced soon, but since they missed telling me that earlier in the installation process, Tesla offered to cover the cost of re-roofing the area under the solar array at no extra cost, and I took them up on it. So on May 2nd, the roof was replaced, and then on May 11th, the solar array was actually installed. I received my permission to operate email from SCE a few weeks later on May 25th, Unfortunately though, I was at the airport about ready to fly out to Japan and Taiwan for two weeks when I got that email, so it wasn't until June 12th, 2019, after I returned, that we actually got to turn the system on. My system is composed of 18 solar panels, model SC325, rated at 325 watts per panel peak, giving me a total potential output of 5,850 watts. My main electrical panel is rated at 200 amps, and a 100 amp sub-panel supports the gateway with the battery backed up circuits on it, which covers most of my house. It's mainly just the AC that's on the separate circuit and check out my follow-up video with the zombies if you're interested in how it works when it comes to drawing power from the grid versus drawing power from the battery. The Tesla Powerwall 2 has a fully integrated Tesla inverter, stores up to 14 kilowatt hours of sun juice and can output 5 kilowatts of continuous power, 7 kilowatts peak. It comes with a 10-year warranty that covers unlimited cycles. The solar inverter for the solar array is also warranted for 10 years and then the solar panels are warranted for 12 years for workmanship and guaranteed to output at least 80 percent of their power capacity after 25 years. Workmanship for the installation otherwise is covered for 20 years. Now I highly recommend checking out my earlier videos in this series for details of the system in use, but to sum up, there is a Tesla app that lets you see a live view of solar generation for your solar array in yellow, how much your home is using in blue, and how much power your power wall is delivering or if it's charging in green. Your electric grid power from your utility is shown in white. We tend to use about 15 to 25 kilowatt hours on normal days and maybe 20 to 40 kilowatt hours during the summer when we up our AC usage. But I'll be honest, for the past six months or so, I just didn't think much about the power wall or the solar and we just used our home electricity normally. I was a little worried that we were slipping into old habits and using more power, but then as mentioned at the beginning of this video, I checked our power bill. So here's the three year chart of our power usage from July to June with the two previous years shown in blue and orange. At most, we paid just shy of $300 for electricity back in July 2016, that was before we had the power wall and the solar. The smallest bill we had pre-power wall was about $75 in April 2018. That's still more than our most expensive bill with the power wall and solar, which was $70.87 back in August 2018. We used a lot of AC in August last year. Aside from that though, the bills have been less than $15 
$1,000 a month, and we received a credit a few times because we generated more power than we used. I thought it was interesting that the best times of year for us cost-wise were the spring and the fall, when temperatures are more mild and we don't need to use the AC or the electric heater that my wife is sometimes fond of. Even though these numbers do look good to me though, the view of the whole year did even out some of my stats compared to my six month review video back in December. So when comparing the system upfront cost minus the $9,700 tax credit I got when I filed this year, the total is $22,698. Unfortunately, my average monthly bills are actually a bit lower when looking at the whole year as compared to six months, which brings my average monthly savings down to just over $147 a month as compared to the six month review where I pegged it at about $170 a month. This means that my time to recoup that upfront cost has actually increased by about one and a half years by these estimations to 12.83 years versus the 11.15 years that I estimated back in December. That pretty much sums it up though. I'm going to maybe be taking a little bit more time to pay this off, but still well within reason given that the original expectation was going to be about 15 years. My likes and dislikes about the system haven't really changed since those older videos. And if you missed it, my zombie apocalypse situation video answered a lot of the questions people had from those original Powerwall videos, such as whether the system will work without an internet connection. It will, just FYI. I will be protected in the inevitable zombie apocalypse scenario that is bearing down on us, as long as these zombies do not develop EMP technology, of course. That is all for this video though, guys, but if you have more questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them. One last note, Tesla emailed me recently to remind me to clean my solar panels, which I'll admit I have been lax on. So let me know if you'd be interested in a quick solar panel before and after cleaning test to see how much of a difference removing that dust and dirt actually makes when it comes to solar power generation. Thank you guys so much for watching this video though. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and we'll see you all next time.